Hi, this is George, and you're watching The Return of the King channel. I've been waiting for this April 8th eclipse for over a year now. We are now just days away from the most exciting seven months in rapture-watching history since the appearance of the blood moons and the Revelation 12 sign. I believe the rapture will occur sometime between the 10th of April on the third day after the eclipse and the Feast of Trumpets 2024. If you've watched some of my most recent videos, you know that I had two rapture dreams back in 2020. The first dream is completed very precisely by the eclipse on the band of the fish. And the second dream is fulfilled when the moon appears in the constellation of Aries on the third day of Nisan. This is the only period in time in which both dreams can be fulfilled sequentially and make sense. The eclipse occurring on the band of the fish is very precise. Having the first dream completed by the eclipse and then the second dream on the 10th when the moon is in the constellation of Aries is pretty amazing by itself. But that's not all. Above the head of the dragon, the dragon in Revelation chapter 12, who wants to devour the Christian, is the planet Jupiter, the symbol of the Christian from the Revelation 12 sign. And located between the moon and Jupiter is a comet. The prophet Joel tells us that before the day of the Lord comes, the tribulation, there will be signs in the heavens. And I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. On today's modern Jewish calendar, Nisan 1 begins on April 8th at sunset in Jerusalem. Nisan is the first month on the Jewish sacred or religious calendar. On the first day of Nisan, a comet and a total solar eclipse will appear over America in the constellations of the rapture. Seven months later, on the Feast of Trumpets, on today's Jewish calendar, another eclipse will occur. It, too, will be accompanied by a comet. The eclipse is visible from South America. The ring of fire eclipse occurs in the constellation of Virgo, the Virgin. The comet appears between Virgo and Hydra, the serpent from the Garden of Eden. The very first prophecy of the redemption of mankind is found in Genesis 3, 14 and 15. In theological terms, it's called the Proto-Evangelium, which means the first announcement of the gospel. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. The fulfillment of this prophecy begins with the virgin birth of Christ and then with his death and resurrection. The end of the story begins when in Revelation chapter 5, the lion of the tribe of Judah is found worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals. Seven months after the first eclipse, on the Feast of Trumpets, a ring of fire eclipse will occur in the constellation of the Virgin. Jewish rabbis throughout history have believed solar eclipses represent judgment coming to the world. The story in the heavens on this day is the story of the seed of the woman, Jesus, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, coming to take his kingdom back from the serpent, Satan, the present-day ruler of this world. What are the odds of having a solar eclipse and a comet appearing on the first day of the Jewish religious calendar, and then seven months later, another solar eclipse and a comet appearing on the Feast of Trumpets, the first day of the civil Jewish calendar? Highly unlikely. Before Jesus begins to take his kingdom back in the fall, he's going to take his people, the Christians, out. I believe the eclipse on the 8th is a three-day warning for the bride of Christ to get ready. The earliest I'm looking for the rapture to occur is on the 10th, when the moon is in Aries. The latest, the Feast of Trumpets in the fall. The reason for this wide range is the war in the heavens found in Revelation chapter 12. That war could delay the rapture in the same way the response to Daniel's prayer was delayed 21 days. That war is related in some manner to the rapture. The big question is, is it just before the rapture 
an attempt to prevent it, or is it the result of the rapture? It's hard to tell from the text. It's in Daniel chapter 10, verse 4, that we find out that it was on the 24th day of the first month that the angel arrived in response to Daniel's prayer. The angel tells us he was delayed 21 days because he had to do battle with the prince of Persia. So it was most likely on the third day of the first month when Daniel began fasting and praying for 21 days. The third day after the eclipse, with day one being the day of the eclipse, would then be the 10th, the day the moon is in the constellation of the Lamb. So there's a very interesting relationship to what happened with Daniel and what we see in the heavens on the third day after the eclipse. So if we're still here after April 10th, the 24th of Nisan would be a day of strong interest. The exact day of the rapture is not that important to me. What is important is that the signs found in Revelation chapter 12 complete the spring. And what we see in the heavens on the Feast of Trumpets tells the story of the seed of the woman, Jesus, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, coming to take his kingdom back from the serpent. So what makes the most sense at this moment in time is that the rapture will occur sometime between the two eclipses. Just so you understand, on today's Jewish calendar, not the calendar used at the time of Christ, which works differently, Nisan 1 begins at sunset on the 8th of April. If God wants signs in the heavens to mean something to today's Jewish population, the impact will be better if the signs appear on days that have meaning. The sun will go dark in Little Egypt, Illinois, at 2 p.m. local time and 9 p.m. in Jerusalem, well after sunset. Little Egypt is the intersection of the August 2017 eclipse and the April 8, 2024 eclipse. Three days later, with Nisan 1 being day 1, Nisan 3, the third day, begins just after sunset. The third day is the day the moon appears in the constellation of Aries. The ancient Jewish rabbis believed the moon represented the Messiah, to us, Jesus. The story that you see here is that of the bridegroom, Jesus, coming to get his bride, symbolized by Jupiter, the Christian from the Revelation 12 sign. The sign appears above the head of the dragon who wants to devour the Christian. I covered this day, the third day, in detail in the video link appearing here. This is the view from the eastern shore of the Sea of Galilee, looking west just after sunset. The dragon of Revelation chapter 12 is a sea serpent, known in the Old Testament as Leviathan. When the constellations are viewed over water, it appears as though the dragon is leaping out of the waters in an attempt to devour the Christian, the male child from the Revelation 12 sign. After our escape from the dragon, the prophet Isaiah tells us what's going to happen to this sea serpent at the end of the tribulation. In that day the Lord, with his hard and great and strong sword, will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, Leviathan, the twisting serpent, and he will slay the dragon that is in the sea. Every celestial body in our solar system except Pluto is in this section of the sky. Psalm 19 tells us that the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. It has been brought to my attention that the name for the planet Uranus originates from the Greek word for heaven, which is Uranos. The entire New Testament was originally written in Greek. Whenever you encounter the word heaven in the New Testament, it corresponds to the Greek word Uranus. And what do we see just above Jupiter, the planet Uranus symbolizing heaven? At the rapture, the male child, the Christian from Revelation chapter 12, is taken to God and his throne, heaven. Revelation chapter 12 is about our escape from the dragon. The story of our escape appears on this day in the heavens in the evening sky. The appearance of the sign in the evening sky is telling us that the church age, the age of grace, is coming to a close. On the first day of the seventh month, on the eve of the Feast of Trumpets, which begins at sunset on October 2nd, 
which is the first day of the year on the Jewish civil calendar, we have a ring of fire eclipse in the constellation of Virgo and a comet between the constellations of Virgo and the serpent Hydra. The story in the heavens on this day is that of the seed of the woman, Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, coming to crush the head of the serpent, Satan. In the Old Testament, there are seven appointed times, three of which are feast days. The three feast days are the Feast of Booths or Tabernacles, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the Feast of Harvest, also known as Pentecost. It was on these three feast days all males were required to attend. These three feast days were meetings with God. The first three appointed times, starting with the Feast of Tabernacles, were fulfilled by Jesus. Many theologians believe the Church Age, the Age of Grace, began at Pentecost. We are currently in the Church Age, the Age of Grace. The Church Age, Pentecost, is brought to a close by the Rapture. The dead in Christ rise first, in other words, are resurrected. Then we who are alive rise to meet Christ in the air. Once the Rapture occurs, the next appointed time or feast to be fulfilled is the Feast of Trumpets. This is the day the tribulation is set to begin. Ken Johnson, in his book, Ancient Messianic Festivals and the Prophecies They Reveal, says this about the Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. We can see the timing of the events of the Day of the Lord by looking at Joel 2 and his use of festival language. The blowing of the last trump, not the first Pentecost trump, starts the Day of Jehovah, which is very terrible and ends with the blowing of the great shofar at the time of the fast. The Day of Atonement is the only one of the seven festivals that is a fast. It teaches about the second coming. This second coming is when the bridegroom, who has been in the wedding chamber with his bride for one week, leaves with the bride to come to earth. A Jewish wedding at the time of Christ lasted one week or seven days. The tribulation lasts seven years. At the end of the tribulation, we return with Christ on Yom Kippur. The Feast of Trumpets in Israel begins at sunset on October 2nd. It's a two-day feast that ends at sunset on October 4th. It will be getting close to midnight in Israel when darkness from the eclipse begins to occur over the tip of South America, putting the eclipse well into the first day of the Feast of Trumpets. Between the Feast of Trumpets and Yom Kippur is the seven-day period known as the Days of Awe or the Terrible Days. These days represent the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year tribulation. A Jewish wedding at the time of Christ lasted seven days. Our wedding with Christ in heaven will last seven years. At the end of the seven years, we will return with Christ on Yom Kippur, thus fulfilling all the appointed times. During the millennium, all nations will be required in some fashion to appear in Jerusalem to celebrate the last fall feast, the Feast of Tabernacles. Why would this be? Because Jesus was born on tabernacles and we will be celebrating his birth, the day God became man to redeem mankind. This is the view of the heavens at sunrise from Jerusalem on October 3rd, the first of Tishri, the first day of the Feast of Trumpets. In the morning sky, we see a very complete pictographic story of the seed of the woman, Jesus, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, coming to crush the head of the serpent. Between the lion and the serpent is a comet. This comet is expected to be extremely bright. Millions of people will be looking at the comet in the morning sky with no understanding of what they're really looking at. The story of the return of the king. The king who from his throne in heaven is about to begin to take his kingdom back from the ruler of this world, Satan, symbolized by the serpent. Joseph Zeiss, in his book, The Gospel and the Stars, says this about the serpent. The gospel is chiefly made up of the story of the serpent and the cross, the doctrine of the fall and depravity of man through the subtlety of the dragon, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, and the recovery of fallen man through a still mightier one who comes from heaven, assumes human nature, 
and by suffering, death, and exaltation to the right hand of supreme dominion, vanquishes the dragon and becomes the author of eternal salvation. The final chapter of Christ's return to vanquish Satan's rule over the earth is beginning. The story in the heavens on the Feast of Trumpets, the next feast day to be fulfilled, confirms that the king is coming. The constellations beginning with Taurus and ending with the Lion of the tribe of Judah are the constellations of the Tribulation. In the time period surrounding the April 8th eclipse, all the celestial bodies of the solar system, visible to the naked eye, were in or near the constellations of the rapture, the lamb, the fishes, and the dragon. Prior to the start of the tribulation, Christ the lamb takes the Christian, the church, out of this world. Revelation 12:5 tells of our escape from the dragon. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron but her child was caught up to God and his throne. The Greek word translated caught up is the word harpazo, the rapture. The male child of Revelation 12:5 is Christ and his church. You are not a Christian unless Christ dwells within you. He is the head and we are the body. At the rapture, the male child, Christ and his church, are taken to God and his throne. We are now seated in the heavens with Christ. The constellation of Gemini symbolizes Christ and his bride and Cancer, heaven. It takes the moon seven days to travel from the constellation of the Lamb to the constellation of heaven, Cancer. We will be with Christ for the duration of the seven-year tribulation. The tribulation begins just after the Lion of the tribe of Judah is found worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals. It is the Lamb of Revelation 6-1 who begins the tribulation by opening the first of seven seals, releasing the four horsemen. In Revelation 22, 12 and 13, Jesus says this, Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. In the Greek alphabet, the alpha is the first letter of the alphabet and the omega, the last. In the Hebrew alphabet, the aleph is the first letter and the tav, the last. In the earliest Hebrew alphabet, which is pictographic just like the heavens, the first letter, the aleph, was the picture of an ox. The last letter, the tav, a cross. Hebrew reads from right to left, so the first letter begins here and the last here. The tribulation begins when Jesus the Lamb, the Alpha and the Omega, in Hebrew, the Aleph and the Tav, releases the four horsemen. Taurus is an ox, an auroch, the largest and most feared ox to ever walk the earth. They were hunted to extinction. Joseph Zai says this about the constellation of Taurus. This terrific animal appears here in the intensest rage, dashing forward with swift and impetuous energy, and with his great sharp horns set as if to run through everything that comes in its way. The scriptures everywhere tell us of a period of indignation, when the Lord shall come forth out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, when he will no longer keep silence, when the earth shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. He is very long-suffering now. Men sin, but his judgment does not quickly follow upon transgression. Sin is added upon sin, and wickedness upon wickedness. Yet the Lord keeps silence, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But there is a limit to his forbearance. There is a time coming when he will tear in pieces, and there shall be none to deliver. His own word is, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and to destroy the sinners thereof out of it. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. The earth shall remove out of her place, in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through.
Jupiter is in the constellation of Christ the Judge. Judgment is coming to the inhabitants of the earth and to the present ruler of the earth, the red dragon, Satan. Directly in front of the charging bull is the planet Mars, another symbol of the red dragon. During the tribulation, the red dragon, Satan, will be used by Christ to bring judgment on the inhabitants of the earth. At the end of the tribulation, the dragon and his army will be defeated by Christ and his army. The last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the Tav, was associated by the Jewish rabbis with the constellation of Libra. Libra represents God's judgment on those who are not covered by the blood of Christ. In Revelation 22:16, we are told that Jesus is the bright morning star. In the evening sky, the bright morning star appears in the constellation of Libra. In Revelation 6:1, it's the Lamb who opens the first of seven seals to start the tribulation. In Revelation 6:15 through 17, it's the wrath of the Lamb the world fears. Then the kings of the earth, and the great ones, and the generals, and the rich, and the powerful, and everyone, slave and free, hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? The story in the heavens begins with the virgin birth of Christ, the seed of the woman, and it ends with the lion of the tribe of Judah taking his kingdom back from the ruler of this world, Satan, symbolized by the serpent and the red dragon. The seed of the woman is Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah. In the heavens, the head of the serpent is in front of the paws and the mouth of the lion. In some ancient star charts, the paws of the lion stand directly on the head of the snake. Joseph Zeiss says this about this scene in the heavens. In the Dendera spear, the lion stands directly on the serpent, while underneath is the hieroglyphic name Nem, which means vanquish, conquered. The plain idea is that here is the end of the serpent dominion. The name Hydra means the abhorred. The principal star Alphard means the separated, the excluded, the put out of the way. Another name in the constellation is Mincher el Shuga, which means the punishing or tearing to pieces of the deceiver. Everything thus falls in with the one idea and adds its share to prove that we here have, by the intent of those who framed these signs, a direct and graphic picture of the glorious triumph of the seed of the woman crushing the serpent's head and putting him out of the way forever. End of quote. The constellation crater represents the cup of God's wrath. Revelation 14, 9 through 10 speaks of the cup of God's wrath. And another angel, a third, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image, and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he also will drink the wine of God's wrath poured full strength into the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Biting at the tail of the serpent is a raven. What the birds do to the serpent and those aligned with him is found in Revelation chapter 19. Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and with a loud voice he called to all the birds that fly directly overhead. Come gather for the great supper of God, to eat the flesh of kings, 
the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all men, both free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against him who was sitting on the horse and against his army. And the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet, who in its presence had done the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped its image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur, and the rest were slain by the sword that came from the mouth of him who was sitting on the horse, and all the birds were gorged with their flesh. The story ends with the birds gorging on the flesh of Christ's enemies. The story in the heavens is picture perfect for the rapture to occur between now and the Feast of Trumpets. The prophetic timeline in the heavens aligns perfectly with what's happening now on the earth. As I said in the beginning, we are entering the most exciting seven months in rapture-watching history. I look forward to meeting you all very soon in the air at the rapture. Thanks for watching.